Hi and welcome to this short video on using mid-course surveys to improve an online course. My name is Rob Power. I'm an adjunct professor of educational technology. I'm also a member at large on the executive of the International Association for Mobile Learning. In my experience with online learning, there are three types of survey data that are most likely to be used by educators and instructional designers. Student satisfaction surveys, pre-test, post-test results, and competency or aptitude profiles. In this video, I'm going to focus on student satisfaction surveys. In particular, I'm going to provide examples of how I've used mid-course student satisfaction surveys, sometimes referred to as stop-start surveys, to make on-the-fly course improvements to provide the best possible experience for online learning students. I'm going to draw upon an example from an online course that I taught in the winter 2016 term at the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. The course was EDUC 5103, Online Technology in Education, which ran from January to April 2016. For this particular course, a deliberate decision was made to use a free web hosting service, Weebly, to host a course website instead of using a traditional learning management system. The course website provided students with all of the information that they required about the course, as well as a list of all course activities and the resources that students would need for each week. Because a non-traditional platform was being used, it was important to keep tabs on what students were thinking about the delivery method and whether or not they were experiencing any issues that might affect their overall learning experience. I used Google Forms to create two unofficial mid-course student satisfaction surveys. The first survey was conducted at one month into the course. The second survey was conducted a month later. A formal student satisfaction survey was then conducted at the end of the course by UOIT. First, it's important to note that when you run these types of surveys, whether they're official, formal, end of the course surveys, or informal mid-course surveys, participation should be anonymous. Students should never be asked for any information that could identify them or make them uncomfortable about how the instructor will treat them. Making these types of surveys anonymous encourages more candid responses, which is essential if you want accurate information that you can use to make real course improvements. This screenshot shows the first thing that students saw after they clicked on the Begin Survey button for my mid-course surveys. As you can see, the focus jumps right into course content issues and students are asked to rate their overall satisfaction with the course contents and provide suggestions as to what changes could be made. Students were also asked about their satisfaction with the technologies used to deliver the course, including the course website itself. One of the nice things about using Google Forms for surveys is that it's easy to view graphs that summarize the feedback from students or to export the resources in a spreadsheet format. I particularly like how easy it is to analyze the collated data in a spreadsheet form. As you can see from this screenshot, all of the response data is anonymous. That means my focus is on what students were telling me, not who said what. The graphical outputs from my two mid-course surveys were also quite useful. They provided me with a quick way to view changes in student satisfaction levels and expressed needs as the course progressed. You can see here that I could compare the responses from students from both February 1st and March 1st. I could quickly see that just after one month, the majority of students were happy overall with the course contents, but there were some students who expressed some concerns. I was quickly able to see that there were some issues that might need to be addressed. And even if those concerns were only expressed by one or two respondents, addressing them had the potential to improve everyone else's learning experiences. As you can see from the summary numbers from March 1st, the issues that I attended to did result in fewer students expressing concerns about the contents. The graphical representations of the survey results also helped me to quickly identify the specifics of the concerns that were being expressed such as a desire to see more about wearable technologies, a desire to see more about games-based learning, and a desire to see more about virtual reality. These screenshots show the results from February 1st and March 1st of a question related to the course resources. Again, you can quickly see that the changes I made from the first course survey had helped to reduce the number of concerns expressed by students when I repeated the survey a month later. 
Also, again, I could quickly identify the types of issues causing concern for my students. For example, students wanted to see more clarity around course instructions and questions, and a course calendar integrated into the course website was recommended. So now that I've received some anonymous feedback from my students, I need to decide what to do with that information. One of the best ways to deal with the feedback is to prioritize based on the categories of urgent things that need to be done right now, things that would be nice to do now, things that cannot be addressed now but would be good to address for future offerings of the course, and things that are not possible to address. You can see from this table that I added more clarity on instructions and due dates and adding a video intro to the course topics to the urgent category and allowing students to change their groups and presentation topics and adding a video about how to use Zotero to the nice to do now category. Some things like adding topics to the official course curriculum were not possible to do and were placed under that category. It's not enough to just analyze your survey data. Student satisfaction surveys are only useful to you as an online instructor if you act on what you find. This screenshot shows one of the features that I added to the course website after the first mid-course survey in EDUC 5101, an easy to access to-do list. I included links throughout the list to the resource pages associated with the tasks. I also added in SlideShare versions of my unit presentations to the course website in advance of the weekly synchronous Adobe Connect classes so that my students would have an overview in advance about what we'd be doing that week. It was also quite easy for me to add that nice to do now item that I'd identified, a video about how to use the Zotero course library. I embedded that YouTube video on the tools page of the course website. While I wasn't able to address all of the concerns raised in the mid-course surveys right away, the items that I'd identified as good to address for future course offerings did provide me with some pointers that I did implement in a subsequent term. This screenshot from my summer 2016 mobile learning course shows how I integrate Google calendars and a course news block right onto the course homepage so that students could quickly see important information as soon as they logged on. And here's a screenshot of how I integrated Doodle in a course on using technology for teaching and learning at the University of Manitoba to allow students more flexibility in choosing their own teams for a group presentation assignment. It can be difficult to get everything perfect when designing and delivering an online course. Sometimes there are issues we just cannot anticipate because we've not yet met our students for that course offering but there are things that we can and should do to keep on top of providing the best possible learning experience for our students. Mid-course student satisfaction surveys are one of those strategies. Do include opportunities for students to provide feedback during the course. Do review that feedback. Do prioritize what must be done now, what would be nice to do now, what you should do for the future, and what you cannot do, and do act on the feedback. Show your students that you care about their experience by listening to what they have to say. This is your chance to gather your own formative feedback and become a better online educator.